Hello and welcome to Isolation Station 22. I'm Skari, your grateful host, and this has been a daily stream Monday through Friday that we've been doing where we just put paint on it. And I've been building and converting a whole new little patrol of Drukari models. Today we're going to have a video on how to paint Drazar, or like a couple of steps on how to paint Drazar and his incubi. So we're gonna get some base colors in and done. I hope you sit back and enjoy the melody because I'm really, really excited to share with you this project. The chat is open, it is live, and if you did miss today's stream, we'll be back tomorrow with another stream on Twitch. So make sure you check that out for Isolation Station 23. Good morning, everybody. Prankster, Kyle, everybody on YouTube. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much for the follows, the subscriptions, the notifi clicking that notification button, and just staying up to date with everything that we do on the channel. I hope your weekend was fruitful as we are in this period of isolation. Oh, in our world. Well, I guess he was just really happy to see me. Thanks a lot, Black Paint. I've got the music playing, of course, in my earphones. You can see what the jukebox is playing um, on the flip side there. Oh, there we go. Actually, I could totally use this to paint my uh, paint my desk back to the original color. Look at that. Oh, that's that's perfect. Just like that. Kind of get some nice color in there. Okay, let's put this away. Ah, time to get started. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get matte black. So, I'm using matte black from my painter. Uh, one of my favorite black colors once it dries. Fantastic matte black. Like, they, when they say matte black, they mean matte black. And I'm watering it down quite a lot. I just want it to be not as thin as an ink or a wash. But the aim here is to cover all the spots that I didn't get with the base spray. It's important to do this. Instead of turning the model a million times and spraying a model a million times with the base cup, which can then lead to you clump clumping up all the miniatures and stuff there, Kyle burnt his, uh, sorry, Prankster burnt his tongue on his coffee this morning. Does that make him a hipster? He drank his coffee before it was cool. <laughs> and we start with the jokes. Love it. Good morning, the war mistress. Good morning, Eglin. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. By the way, war mistress, your Bulgrin look fan freaking tastic. Well done with that Bulgrin unit looks excellent. So all I'm doing here is I'm turning the model over and I'm getting all the bits that the primer has missed with my watered down concoction of black paint. And we want to do this on the whole model to make sure that everything is shaded and everything is nice. And the reason I'm watering it down is so I don't lose any of the detail. The color will stay the same. And it means that it just, it just, it'll look good. It'll look right. That's kind of what I'm looking for. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to be putting paint on pretty much everything on top of this. So it's important to just uh, do it quickly, you know. And then while this dries, I'll be doing the base of the model. So we'll be uh, painting some of the base. So we don't have to worry about it being wet while we do it. What are you working on lately? Let me know. Also, after the stream, we're going to be raiding Alferis's channel. He starts at noon, actually. He starts his uh, stream at noon. He's doing a celebration stream on Twitch for... Um, becoming an affiliate on Twitch. So he's doing a like an eight hour an eight hour celebration stream or something like that. Which is kinda cool actually. I'm really excited to head on over and check it out. Good morning, Garbanzo Bean Donut as well. 
welcome. I like it when the chat is uh, nice and lively on a on a Monday morning, which is exciting. You know, when we all get to rock and roll and have some fun. Of course, I do have some other models that I'm working on, aka Drazar's Incubi. So this gives me an opportunity to not waste any paint when I'm doing this whole getting into the corners and the reeses that the primer missed. Now, I was thinking of doing, I'm going to be doing my Incubi. And so like the theme of the Incubi that I had started with um, with the other unit of Incubi that I did paint on the stream earlier in the, or later last year, which is like a dark gray panels. Are you retiring the old metal one? Um, well, the old metal one will still be part of my collection. Will I use him at like tournaments and stuff? Probably not. Maybe in like the odd battle report, I might bring him out again, but he might just get put onto the shelf. Biggest reason is when there's a new model and the model size changes, especially if you're going to tournaments and whatnot, you sort of want to make sure that you are using the most accurate model in terms of, you know, model size, unit size, line of sight, that sort of thing. And, uh, even though the uh, the old model does look cool, he is a little smaller, he's a little easier to hide. So it would be disadvantageous for my opponent to have to deal with that. So out of respect for, you know, that part of the game, which is the whole not modeling for advantage, I would probably be running the new one when at all possible. But that's... I guess that's a preference thing, since you technically can use both, and it's not easy to get the new Drazar. It's more expensive. Good morning, Primaris Powerhouse Rob. What's going on? Sark Hammy, do you have other painting tutorials on your channel? I do have the odd one. If you go to, like, the hobby playlist, I have a variety of different hobby tutorials from how to build a display board to how to paint things like this. They're not necessarily, like, you know, um, at the level that you would expect from you know, um, Duncan Rhodes or, you know, other people like that. But, you know, for a newer beginner, sure. You know, they're, they're right. I do need to get some better lighting right now. I'm just, I'm experimenting with, uh, some camera angles today. So you can, you know, if, if you're wondering why the camera angle is a little different, it's because I want to sort of show off the models as I paint them a little better. So I am testing a few things. So please, um, you know, give me a review or, or tell me what you think, actually. Mm -mm -mm. And then later after this, um, I will be doing sort of like a meta Monday um, for the Patreons. It's not really going to be a meta Monday. It's going to be more a like a list review Q&A. Um, I'm switching up the format. Took me, you know, took uh, took suggestions from everybody and kind of got to see and hear what they want to see and hear. So I'm excited to uh, change that up a little bit for you guys, so you can uh, get some extra content while we are all in isolation, waiting for this um, worldwide pandemic to slow down and uh, hopefully get back to a sense of normalcy. Uh, where we can once again go to events and tournaments and spend time with friends, which I think is one of the hardest parts of being t a part is I'm used to going to like tournaments and seeing my friends. And uh, yeah, so however you're dealing with it, I'm sure we all deal with it in our own specific way. Cow goes quack, does it now? Good morning, he says, or she says. I'm thinking about building an Imperial Fist army. Nice. Currently have Grey Knights and Ultras. What are your thoughts on Imperial Fist post-nerf? I think Imperial Fists... Well, being a Black Templar player, you know, I have a bit of a soft spot for any of Rogal Dorn's sons in terms of the game. Um, they're, they're not as, like, overbearing as they used to be. You know, I think that if you're going to use them, you have to keep in mind they're not going to you know, put dominating anti-tank firepower 
for the entire game. You know, they'll get one turn of just crazy firepower. And to be honest, I think mono, like mono Imperial Iron Hands and mono Imperial Fists and mono, you know, ones that use Devastator Doctrine aren't as powerful as some of the other chapters now. So you probably won't see them as often. I could see that, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Where are you holding the model only around 60? Where you're holding the model is only 60% in view. Like this? Or that. Well, I'll try and I'll try and move it around, Kyle. What color are you putting on at the moment? Apologies, you already said I just got off the phone. Uh so it's matte black. It's just uh matte black from the army painter. Basically, I was just going over the bottom of the model, making sure that I got all the little spots that the uh that the primer missed. And that's that was like my main goal. Then I'm going to be using Skaven Blight Dinge, which is the next paint I'll be using to put on the on the base. I'm going to be using mainly Skaven Blight Blind Dinge on the base. Red Badger says, "Yes, finally some paint for the Incubi. Can't wait to see the first reports with them in your army." Well, I thank you. I'm looking forward to putting them in the army. To be honest, I'm looking forward to trying them out. My favorite way of running Incubi. Is running Incubi with um, uh, as Inari. <laughs> yep, that's my favorite way. Okay, grab a, a splot of Skaven Blight Dinge. It's a little dry in here, which is weird. So I'm going to put a little bit of water in there. And then hopefully that'll help. And I'm just using an old paintbrush. So when you mix up old paint with an old paintbrush, it doesn't ruin the paintbrush because it's already an old crappy paintbrush now, isn't it? <laughs> a lot of the times you'll see me shaking paints. It's good to shake your paints before or after you use them. If you like pull paint out of the paint pot and you see that it just needs a little bit of love, just give it a good little shake, you know, shake up the paint, you know, dance to the music while you shake it up. Okay, now I'm using a bigger brush of some sort. And we will be putting some paint on it. So you want it to be watered down. You want it to basically get into all the creases. So don't worry about it getting all over the stone. Like the stone is definitely a like an Eldar ruin. So it's not exactly going to be, you know, great. We're just putting like a base color on on this base here and we will be changing the color as it goes and adding more and dry brushing and putting some more depth into the base but this is just a an initial so don't worry about it being messy you know and then if there's little pieces of the base that kind of come off I just put them aside there Sometimes there's little little pieces of uh, sand or whatever that didn't set well or the glue sort of missed. So they will come off, but that's okay. That's okay. So my weekend was fun. Uh, yesterday was isolation day number 21 for me. And it was the first day it sort of really hit home, I think. So yesterday I kind of had a bit of a, I don't want to say a rough day, but I kind of like really felt it, you know, like just the, just having to stay at home, you know, I love my family, however, it can be crazy, just cabin fever, you know, basically, one like not having any time to yourself can really sort of like weigh on you sometimes. However, you know, I've been having you know, coping in my own way. So what I like to do whenever I'm feeling anxious or stressed is I'll usually put on some music or go up into like just a room and whether the, you know, blinds open, blinds closed, doesn't matter to me. Usually I prefer if it's like sunny outside and the sun's like just beaming into the room. And I'll just kind of close the door, put some music on, on like some noise canceling headphones and just close my eyes for 20 minutes, 20 to, 20 to 30 minutes, and just kind of like take a couple of deep breaths. That's, that's like one of my best stress 
relief mechanisms or as I, as I said, anxiety ways. So I'm, I'm sure you will have your own ways, but it's not easy, you know, to kind of change your whole, your whole schedule. So Matt says, good morning. Ah, painting the big man himself. That, that is right. Also, uh, on Saturday night, I had a my first like tabletop simulator game for the Lord Marshall little one-off tournament that they're having. I got to play Marcus, who normally plays with Harlequins, but he uh, decided to play Sisters of Battle. Is learning Sisters of Battle, so I was able to have a fun game. You, it, it was up on the YouTube channel Lord Marshall TV, and everybody who watched, I hope you had fun watching. My next game will be on Thursday, this Thursday, on the Lord Marshall TV Twitch page at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm playing against Iron Hands, um, Imperial Guard, Tank Commanders, and Imperial Guard Tank Commanders, and uh, Admech guys as well. Mm-hmm. Do you use mostly Army Painter Paints? Um, I use a combination of GW Army Painter Paints, some by Yeho Paints, and some Reaper Paints. I have a combination of them. I really I haven't been picky with like what paints I use, mostly because beggars can't be choosers. So, you know, I've never been a very wealthy individual, and paints are quite expensive. So... For the longest time, I just used GW paints because they were what was available. And to be honest, a lot of the times, like my paint, like I played Black Templars, so like my paint scheme was literally spray things black and then do details, right? So that's kind of how that worked. <laughs> literally, spray things black and then just edge highlight. So you didn't really use like a ton of paint when it came to, you know, paint things and stuff like that, right? Ah, Archon Brang says, don't you have a set of drums in the house? Just smash on those for a bit. Yeah, well, then my, my son's drums, it's like a tiny drum set. It's not like a, a real big person drum set. But I play a lot of video games as well. I'm playing a lot of Dawn of War, which, by the way, is a game that has really held up over time. Like, if you haven't, like, cracked open Dawn of War, like, the first one in a while, I highly recommend you do. It was... It's excellent, like really excellent. Okay, so now I've got this, um, you know, wraith bone sort of construction thing. So I want to make it decent enough. So I'm probably going to use a combination of like a skeleton bone and a flayed one flesh and a an nushapti bone. So I think yeah, I might just use. I might use a skeleton bone to give it like a a color and then sort of do a wash and give it like a like a dark reddish wash. Good morning, BP Edwards. Eglin says finally picked up Tabletop Simulator over the weekend. Had a good four player game at Underworlds. Not sure I'll be playing any full 40k games anytime soon though. That's true. I did learn a couple of cool tricks to do with the tabletop simulator over the weekend, like uh you move the model and you keep tab pressed and it'll show you how far a model has moved so you don't have to measure each individual model so that is actually was really useful I just want to say so right now I'm using army painter skeleton bone with my that is a ginormous spider Woo! spiders have been all over because it is spring right so the spiders are just hanging out going to do their thing Hopefully he doesn't jump on me. Just go with your business, spider. Yeah, yeah, go where I can't see you. No, no. <gasps> there you go. On the floor with you. Go kill some bugs somewhere else. How did you feel about the weak reveals from the weekend? I've, I love the fact that GW is revealing stuff. I don't care how strong or how weak these reveals are. They're keeping us entertained at home. You know, I can't fault them for that. I think GW just doing those reveals is excellent, to be honest. 
Mm-mm-mm. Amdor says, it's weird that I can honestly say having to go to work keeps me sane. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I do this every day. Like, I sit down. I do the streams. And it, keep, and it does give me a semblance of sanity. But it's definitely not the same as, you know, having to do a job or... Like, it's it's doing a job, but it's just different. Like, you know, I'm at home 24-7. Like, normally I have the ability to go to tournaments, which is, like, part of my job. Going to events and playing games and stuff like that, you know? And that gives me, like, interaction with the outside world and whatnot. You know, so when I don't get to do that, it's it's just weird. It's just different. Uh, well, the two reveals now is half the Adepticons. We might actually have a big reveal, so there are two more coming. We had gotten all four of them once, so it would have been more impressive. And, yeah, absolutely. You know, the fact that they've, like, split just the Adepticon reveals into four different, like, online reveals, like, that just shows you. And normally they keep the best for last. Like, when we were at uh, in Vegas and they, they pre-released or they teased Abaddon, right? That was like the last one of the night, you know what I mean? That was like the big one. So he got all the little ones out of the way first, and then the big one was was the last one of the night. So I wouldn't be surprised that they just like giving us, you know, they're just following the template that they had set up for that time, right? Venatusis. Are there any particular brushes you use? Um, I use mainly Citadel brushes, but I do have a sable brush. I have an army painter brush. Um, War Mistress sent me a Momentum Bomb Wick cord brush. Uh, Stalinsky brush. Korlinsky. I've got like a combination. Some of them are just brushes I've literally had in my brush collection for, I want to say, 20 years since I started painting. And I've just never replaced them. I just take good care of them. A lot of the times, even if like the brushes and the bristles are all messed up, a lot of the times you can, as long as you kind of paint to the bristle, I find that the bristles kind of get their own, like bristles get like a life of their own almost, and they bend and twist in different ways. Kind of like using a, um, like a fountain pen. Anybody who's used a fountain pen before, you get like, you get the, uh, like, it kind of bends to your style of painting. So, so, I mean, to your style of writing. So same with a brush, you know, it can, brushes sort of like keep a memory of how you use them. And it gives them, you know, so I know you can use the same brush for a long time just because you can kind of twist your arm or whatever in a way that you kind of get the most out of the brush regardless of how messed up it is. So here I am just putting like the initial color. I'm doing a very, very, very light. Ah, you can tell it's, you can tell it's um, springtime when all the little bugs start popping up everywhere. Silly bugs. Starting waking up from their slumber. They're like, it's springtime. It didn't help as well that they like there was like a nice little forested area at the behind my house and they're developing it into new housing. So they've cut down like a hectare of trees or whatever was back there. It was a really nice little forested area, like a tree preservation area. Not anymore, it isn't. Um so a lot of the wildlife that live back there is kinda like tried has to find a new place to live, essentially. Lawrence from Tabletop Stacks is crawling around your basement. Interesting. Yes, Red Badger. Yes, he is. I like keeping him close, so I can, so I can soak in the information. Or maybe he's he's just learning from me, the true Archon, uh uh uh, the OG Archon. Being an Archon before it was cool. I can't wait to have a game with the spider. I think it'll be super fun when him and I finally, finally throw down. You know, slowly but surely, I have to like play each of these famous people one at a time. You know, I played Jim Vessel on the channel that 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 when he was like on the height of his like Adepticon win. Yeah, 
And so him and I had a game. That was fun. Um, I've played Nick Nanavati twice, two or three times now. Twice? Two times. I did a bat report with him. And that was the morning after. See, I didn't film the game I won. <laughs> but I did beat him the first time we played. And then the second time we played, he had a better understanding of what my army did. And it was still really close. And we did a bat rep for that. I beat John Lennon at the um, the uh, Can Hammer team tournament when Charity Hammer just murdered everybody. It was the only game they lost that weekend. It was against me. Oh yeah, baby. But it's a lot better to under-promise and over-perform than the other way around. Correct. Something that we learn in sales when I was... Uh, when I learned sales, you always under, under promise and over deliver instead of over promise and under deliver. It's the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes it it's just it's good marketing. So you can see here, this is very watered down, but it's just designed to just get the color on the model there. Of course, we're going to do a wash on this. We're probably going to do a couple of layers of this. So it's it's the color will like, you know, two or three thin coats is what you've learned, right? Say it together now. Two or three thin coats. Yay! <laughs> Lawrence versus Sky would be amazing. In-house centipedes are not pretty, but they eat each other. Yeah, they eat the bugs. So that's one of the reasons why every once in a while I'll kill like a spider if it gets like way too close, like it's like literally crawling on me. I'm like, get off your spider. But uh, normally I'll just leave spiders be. Unless they're like, you know, a poisonous spider that could like kill my son. You know, like a black widow spider or something that could be like actually dangerous. But, you know, Canada only has a couple of very poisonous spiders. Now, in Mexico, though, where I grew up, when I was born and raised, like, I remember having to, you know, before you got dressed, you have to shake out your clothes, make sure there weren't any scorpions in my clothes. You know, just make sure that no scorpions had decided to use my clothes as, like, a nice little place to, you know, sleep for the night. Like, my folded clothes. Or you have to just shake your boots, you know, make sure that no spiders or scorpions had gotten into your boots overnight. You know, that's the kind of thing I remember having to worry about. It's not really something you have to do here in uh, Canada. You know what I mean? Valerie Morrison, how are you going to use these incubi? So the re the way I like to use incubi is I like running them as drew as I. Uh, Bobby Hall says, "I hope they paid rent." The uh, the spiders or the or the or the scorpions. <laughs> the spiders or the scorpions. Well, either way, a scorpion you don't mess around with, especially in Mexico. Like, yeah, they're like ones that are more poisonous than others, but you don't want to take your chances because uh, you know that's that's a that's a bad that's a bad time. It's a bad. It's bad news bears for you. There we go. Boom. So it's starting to get a little... Um, so there's also... I do enjoy painting these like... These ruins and stuff, they just look great. <laughs> Matt says, what changes would you make to the Archon's core to make it better? Going back to 5th edition buffs to the Archon or something? I think if they were characters, they would be good still. You know, they took away the character keyword from the index. It's not actually characters. Well, it's like a blessing and a curse at the same time, because you can use them to block characters, you know, from being shot, right? Which is kind of cool. But it also means that you could, like if you have a Lamian in the backfield, um, you know she just she can get shot by a Thunderfire cannon now. So she, you know, before they were really good to just like have a cheap objective holder in the backfield that was a character and you can't kill or you know shoot or whatever. 
But now that's not not some not something you can really do anymore. So how would I change them? Uh, either make them like a unit, I think, would be a great way to do it. Make them like a physical unit again that could, uh, you know, has like every model you put in or whatever. It gives you like uh, different bonuses or whatnot. I think that's a good way to, that's a good way to do it. Mm -mm. That there is some lovely lunch for Slanesh. What, the Incubi? Yeah. So Inari is how I would use the Incubi. I think Inari is just the smartest way to use the Incubi. Um, you have to, if you want to do the whole Incubi thing, I'd take three squads of Incubi. I would take them as Inari. I would take the Vizark to buff them. And then I would take uh, a Dark Eldar Drukari detachment with Drazar. So that then Drazar gets in on the action as well. So Drazar buffs Incubi for being Incubi, not necessarily for being Inari or Drukari. So that gives you access to his plus one to wound aura. And then the Vizark gives uh, rerolls to hit, which is something that I find Incubi lack a lot of the time. They've got lots of great attacks, but sometimes when you just miss, you just wish you had those rerolls. And then having... You know, having that just means that then they can go in. Another really cool thing is Inari have access to a really cool stratagem that's um, where you pick an enemy unit and all Inari units in close combat against that unit get reroll wounds. It's like a it's like a stratagem doom, which works really really well when combined with Incubi. They just literally murder things, so you can have Incubi actually go in and kill some big toughies. And I think that's super important. That that stratagem just makes Incubi into the murder machines that you know you kind of expect them to be. And then you just need good support for them. Like uh keep a, a succubus or a witch unit nearby with a net, you know, or try and wrap something or whatever. So that they can't be shot at the next turn. Because that's one of the biggest pitfalls of a close combat kill unit like Incubi. You know, they literally kill what they touch and then they're stuck in the open. And then being stuck in the open for a unit like Incubi in a game that says as dangerous as 40k right now, it's literally like a death threat, right? Or it's a death sentence is what I meant to say. They just die. So, so as you can see here, I'm just kind of going over the second coat on some of the areas that were like the ones that got the least amount of paint stuck to them. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we have to let it dry and then we'll do another coat on it as well. But it'll give us a good opportunity to... And I did put a lot of paint on my palette. Even though it was like one drop of paint, it's going such a long way. The pigmentation on these army painter paints is like quite good. So, and this is one of my favorite paints, um, this, um, this skeleton bone one. I use it for everything from parchment to, in this case, wraith bone to combination of different things. Also, the book um, Rise of the Inari from Black Library or whatever, the Inari book, was really fun. I really enjoyed reading that book. Level. If you put Skeleton Horde Contrast over the AP paint, it looks so awesome. Like uh, just any army painter paint, or are you talking like Skeleton Bone and Skeleton Horde Contrast on top of the Skeleton Bone? Number one rule of project management, under promise and over deliver, 100%. When you run the Incubi as an RA, do you fill out the attachment with witches? 
Well, you could fill out the detachment with witches, um, you know, but you could just run a detachment of Incubi, right? Because it is a Vanguard detachment. Unless you want to run a battalion, in which case, yeah, sure. Run a battalion, run some Incubi and some witches as an Ari, which is fine, but an Ari could be anything. I mean, I'll usually be taking the Incarn at that point, so I'd be taking the Incarn if I did that, so I'd be running a beast master pack in the elite slot as well. And I'd be running a bunch of the, uh, the birds to go with the incarn. Cause I find that they just synergize really well. I kind of like that. I think that contrasts really nicely with the gray. Now, I'm not sure what I, what color I should do the, um, what color I should do the um, the the little thorns? Maybe like a red or an orange. I think would look really nice. But that's the cool thing about doing this sort of painting stuff. You can kind of think about it on the fly. Maybe make them similar to Dark Disciples. They can't be tired as long as they stay within twenty of the Archon. See, that would be kind of cool in terms of the core of the Archon, keeping them alive. You know, at the same time, it's just like for the points though, right? It's like, you know, it's 27 points or whatever for a slith, right? And don't get me wrong, he's fun, he's cool, right? But for that many points, I could literally take another unit of Kabbalite Warriors. So why wouldn't I take more troops, right? Other than a slith who has less wounds than the unit of Kabbalite Warriors and is an obsec, you know? So I can't like, that can't steal objectives from people and... Yeah, it keeps the Archon alive, so in a pinch, I guess, if you really needed it, but it's like, I don't know. I don't know. There's just, there are enough, there are enough, well, what if this and what if that's that it doesn't, it doesn't always make it, you know, certain when you're trying to build a list with the Court of the Archon. Don't get me wrong, I love the Court of the Archon models. I think they're great. They look awesome. Lamians are super fun. If you run them as like um, poison tongues, they get reroll ones to wound with poison weapons. And then their little um, poison blades do mortals on fours, which is really cool. So you can be like little like mortal wound factories if you want to, but then you can only run three of them, right? And they only have two attacks each. So, man, for 15 points is not terrible though. But it can be really handy in a pinch if you need like some mortal wounds against like a you know, if your friend has a bunch of smash captains that's like keeps on running at you, keep a little unit of uh, Lamians nearby, you know, 30, 40, 35 points for three Lamians who run in and do, you know, a bunch of mortal wounds to kill said smash captain dead. Valerie says, what do you think of the new Banshee models? Well, I did paint the entire Banshee set um like Jane Zar's Banshees and that was really cool. I really enjoyed that. Um they they really came out nicely. So I'm really happy that I got got to paint them. And uh they were they were they were a dream to paint. They really were. Right now I'm just uh changing gears here a little bit. I'm doing some of the I don't like wasting paint, so even though I'm technically painting Drazar, I'm just doing the same thing. Gonna let the the paint on Drazar dry, and then I'll be doing another coat of the same paint on Drazar. I did make the bases on these incubi stand out a little bit by putting a little bit of this wraith bone on there. Want to make their bases, you know, look a little a little more, you know elaborate than just flock so uh, dun, dun. it's okay if it gets a little dirty the washes will help and everything so just just hashtag put paint on it folks don't worry about it being perfect just get some paint on that stuff get some paint on it folks could you do purple for the thorns and glowing orange for the runes that is true actually Sadly, Rule of Three breaks some fun concepts for beginner Lamians. Yes, true. You take a max of three Lamians. That's about it. 
Archon Draxar, what's going on? I wish there was a stratagem to let you activate the core the models when you fight with an Archon. Like fight at the same time sort of thing? Interesting. Yeah, I guess that would be kind of annoying, you know, when somebody could just quickly interrupt your uh, arc your court models or whatever from attacking where it's like one at a time so you kind of have to attack with one and then go do you want to interrupt and then them interrupt if they want to you know Now, something that I've learned over time is when you're trying to get something painted, just paint it. You know, if this is the first time that you've tuned into one of my little painting tutorials or streams, we have a very simple philosophy. It's hashtag just put paint on it. If you ever just want to get something done, just put paint on it. It's a great solution to pretty much every problem you have in life. You're feeling down, marital problems, trouble paying rent, hashtag just put paint on it. I don't actually think it's the actual solution to all your problems. I'm painting my Drazar, says Draxar. Nice. Sme many much edge highlights. True. It is an elegant solution, War Mistress. You've got that right. You know, we know what we're doing. We do. And I'm glad everybody's around for the ride. Mm -mm -mm. So I'll try to get another light for the models for tomorrow so you can see the models a little better. But you can actually see me working on the models instead of uh, just having like a general overview of my hobby table, which has been a very common sight lately while I've been building and converting. I hope you guys enjoyed the little converting the Raider Riders into actual models to use on the tabletop. That's been fun. I made a small unit of five of those. <laughs> there we go. That's that. So three of the Incubi have little pieces of rubble on their base and stuff, which is always fun. Okay, time to do another coat of the good stuff. Do you have any plans for big games or campaigns where COVID quarantine is over? Yeah, we have a big game um, scheduled that we do every year. Uh, Kyle from Gear Guts Mech Shop um, over like with the Magnet Baron. He he has a whole 3D printing orc thing where he has his own designs and everything's really cool. So he owns like hundreds of thousands worth of orc points. And uh, last year we did a cool like apocalypse game. We had all of his orcs. Uh, versus uh, like a bunch of other people's collections all combined. And that was supposed to happen in April. However, this COVID uh, pandemic has sort of put a damper on that. However, it is still there, and we will do it as soon as time permits. And this time, it should be all streamed, because the store did set up internet connection for us, actually, so that I could do streams directly from the store when we ran events and stuff which is kind of cool. So now I just need to get Kyle around and we'll get that done. And then you'll see all of his orcs versus all of my stuff. And it'll be an absolute fantastic slobber knocker of a time. Yep.
And yes, by the way, for the little thorns and stuff, I know like my blades and whatnot are going to be like that purple pink that I use for my Dark Eldar. So it kind of gives it like a, that's like a really good glowy effect that gives like most of my army. So something that complements that is normally like a red or a blue or whatever. What the frick, man. I'm not a fan when this decides to not do what it's supposed to. Hmm. Okay. But boom. Woo! Oh, his tank army was amazing. Yes, Amdor. Like, that was just a fraction of the stuff that he owns. He owns, like, so much stuff. Last year, says Primary's Powerhouse, my Crimson Fist held the Imperial Sanctuary at the far flank very well, but this year I'm powering through as an Orc Commander. Yes, you'll definitely, you know, we have different people who basically sign up to help um, help Kyle move his Orcs because there are so many Orcs. Which is crazy how much stuff we have. Warrior. I'm a warrior, warrior. It's a little rune of some sort that he must have pecked off of a... Uh some sort of aspect warrior here, so I am going to make sure that this is also in Wraith Bomb. And then we've got all the gemstones that he's literally torn out of people. Like just tons and tons of gemstones, so I'm really excited about painting all those. Should give him all like a story of each individual gemstone he's physically torn out. Wah, 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 wah. See, that's the, that's the lore master in me. Being like, you know, it would be really cool to have a story of how he's literally tortured every soul that has come out of his, uh, come out of this. I had a little tooth there, so I decided to do the tooth and the bone as well. Yeah, so we've got all that. Boom. That looks great. You know, this, this model definitely comes to life more with, uh, the edge highlighting and stuff as it kind of gets going. Because that's kind of how you make this model look alive, is with all that edge highlighting. <sighs> mm -hmm. and then I also have all the other Cabalite Warriors, the Venoms, and the Venom bases. I'm essentially going to be doing like a whole little patrol with this new scheme, which I'm really excited about. As you can see here, I didn't wait long enough, and it kind of darkened this little area here of like with stuff that's, you know, just watery. So I have to basically wait and put a little bit extra paint on there. Okay. So there's certain things that I definitely, definitely, definitely know the color of and certain things that I definitely, definitely, definitely don't know the color of. I definitely don't want to use a lot of dry brushing, but I definitely want to use that pink that I've been using, that purple pink to get the color of the blades going and that's like a big accent color that I think I'm just gonna block in that color because it's gonna really help me thank you very much to War Mistress for sending me this one here uh, it's Gain Color Warlord Purple which is a fantastic color from Vallejo I believe Jack Wharton says finished my Draz last night great model lots of fun to paint probably took a good 10 hours in the end yeah well, we're going to be doing, you know, a couple hours a day on this guy over here. So I think each soul stone is from an aspect warrior exarch, according to the lore. Nice. That is because he is a badass. War mistress. Glad you're getting use out of it. Oh, yeah, I know. And it, like, works great. 
like so far i've been super super excited about this color it has been one of my favorite colors and it's like excellent Dun, 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 dun. Ah, yes. Current pile of paint is three towels, nine incubi, one venom, two raiders, five scourge, one succubus, one archon, five scourge. So ten scourge. Just get me going however until we lock down. Nice. I literally converted... Uh, five Cavalite Warriors out of nothing, and I had two Venoms lying in my Bits box, so I decided to build those Venoms, and I decided to get these Incubi all ready to rock and roll, so I literally have these Incubi, two Venoms, five Cavalite Warriors ready to get painted and rock and roll. So that's literally my isolation, isolation station paint, paint goal. Which I'm super pumped about. Oh, I love this. This color is so good. Something I've been watching, I've been watching the Simpsons episodes from the beginning. I'm on season four. So that has been super fun. I've really enjoyed that so far. Is this Screamer Pink? Now this is Vallejo Game Color Warlord Purple. And this one right here that I'm using. Oh, yeah. And uh, thank you. Sent to me for my birthday. For, uh, the War Mistress sent it to me for my birthday. So that was awesome. And some delicious tea, Earl Grey tea, because that's one of my favorites. There we go. Boom. So I'm just taking my time with it. I don't want to rush this. It is going to be a centerpiece to the army. So you definitely don't want to rush, you know, when you're trying to get the lines and stuff. If you do make a mistake, don't fret. And you're going to be getting a couple of coats on. So it doesn't have to be super perfect. However, you want to try and make it as smooth as possible. So don't sweat it if it's not perfect. However, try your best. As you can see, if you... Well, I don't know if you can see, but I am keeping this hand anchored on that hand and that's how you make sure that you don't so I've got like a, a pressure point it's like I'm grabbing a chopstick here that's how I prevent my hand from shaking Ooh, that look cool. Mm. 
I love it when um, when a concert come up like that purple. Uh, uh, such a sexy looking purple. Bam 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 bam. Been assembling everything I own during social distancing. That's awesome. You know, that's the best way to get stuff painted is to put it together first. And then once you put it together, then afterwards you can actually start painting, painting it. Right? It's kind of how that works. I've been using Screaming Pink on the cloaks, tabards on my death guard. Nice. I love the purple blade. and might steal that idea. Oh, please do. Please steal the purple blade idea. I think, uh, you know, anything that shows off for the first time in my life, I will have a chance having every model painted. That is incredible not very many of us can say that that is for sure so this is the clavex hey clavex what's going on i gave him the demi claves but i gave him the demi claves with the attached demi clave so if i wanted to use it as a clave i can and it doesn't look awkward Bam, 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 bam. Mm, 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 mm. Bam, 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 bam. Woo! Go Purple Blades. Give it up for the Purple Blades, folks. Purple Blades. Down to Talos and Fiber Axe and Death Jester. Wow, Valerie. That's fantastic. It's really cool to kind of like feel accomplished when you're at that point, you know? It's crazy how, you know, we, we want to find like, we each want to find like those little things that like, you know, are going to keep us going and keep us sane. Sometimes just being able to say, hey, I got some stuff painted, you know, keeps us motivated. Me being able to do the stream every day, you know, that really keeps me motivated when, you know, we're just hanging out and get to chat with you folks. You know, it keeps me on track and keeps me focused on, you know, what the what the end goal is, which is to hashtag just put paint on it, right? You know, the purple blades are one of my favorite parts of the Incubi. Like, especially on my metal models, like I, I kind of started that idea on my metal models and it's kind of translated into something that I just cannot wait to have just in general. Because they do seem relatively dangerous. So if you want to share something you're working on, you can always reach out to me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Patreon, where you can send me what you're working on. And I'd love to see the inspiration that uh, you sent, or on Twitter as well. I had a few people reach out to me and be like, hey, this is what I'm working on. You said share it, and I love it. It really keeps me motivated to see everybody out there working on something. If you're in the stream, you can always put a link to something that you really enjoyed or comment down below. You know, what is it that you are working on right now at this moment in time to kind of help motivate those around you to keep painting and hobbying? in these trying times. Of 
course, I'll be putting pictures up of these on the Instagram and Facebook once they're done. So you guys can see how it looks after it's been... I try and paint every day after work, says Valerie. That is fantastic. It's really cool to kind of, you know, get a habit going, especially. It's super hard to get habits, like a habit going when it comes to painting. <clears throat> it's too easy to just let, you know, let it slide and binge watch a bunch of Netflix. Although you can kind of binge watch a bunch of Netflix. Or you can always put a scarred cast battle report in the background. Cha-ching. There you go. That's your money shot right there. Uh, uh, um, these are the lads I'm currently working on, says Red Badger. Ooh, I'm excited to see what you're working on, Red Badger. Oh, no. I love the pigmentation in this by Yoho Paint. It is absolutely incredible. Painting an hour a day keeps the gray plastic at bay. That is correct. Or you can just, uh, hashtag put paint on it with us every single day. And, um, ooh, Incubi. There you go. Love it. Love the green and the purple. Mmm, so good. Looks really good, Red Badger. Very inspiring. Thank you for sharing. It's nice to see pictures of your Incubi getting painted. You know, if that is your, if that is what you are working on as well, you're just following along with what I'm doing, which is exciting. Or doing it on your own accord and not necessarily following along because... You know, I don't mind taking credit for everything. Ah, ah, ah. Being a true Dark Elder that I am. And tomorrow we will be back on Twitch. So if you haven't subscribed on the Twitch channel, please do or consider subbing to the YouTube channel or Twitch or for like, share, subscribe or uh, join the Denizen community and become a Patreon and support uh, everything we do on the channel here while getting access to some really cool perks like additional video content, a cool Discord community and Facebook community of like-minded positive hobbyists like yourself. Ooh. So much le purple, le purple. Purple and green is my jam, says Draxar. Yeah, purple and green are colors that go really well together. One of the reasons I started uh, using them for canopies and stuff. At first, it was just regular purple, but then I decided to go for a brighter pink color to really sort of set my army apart in the in just the theme. And I, it's funny, the first tournament I went to that had the new color all on my thing, I won the Best Painted Award, which was really cool. Got like a player's choice because people really liked how it looked. And then I went to another bigger tournament, and not all the models were 100% finished, and the judges noticed that, so I got dinged on my paint score pretty heavily. So that made me sad, which is what encouraged me to sort of want to repaint my whole Dark Elder army. Because I was like, I am going to hashtag just put paint on it and approve these judges that next year when I go back to the event, I'm going to have everything done and finished. And hopefully that'll give me a better paint score. As long as I'm constantly improving, I'm okay with that. There we go. Aha! Woo! Ah, look at that. So it's been about an hour in the stream, about this time, that if you'd like to share the stream on your favorite social media platform outlet with a selfie of yourself and the hashtag just put paint on it, you can. Take a picture of yourself hobbying or working or watching something, being like painting with Skari. 
isolation station, hashtag just put paint on it. Okay, last incubi to do, and then we can go back and do Drazar's Blades again. Hmm. A lot of the times I find it interesting to just sit back, relax, and do a color, and not worry about how long it's taking. Just worry about putting paint on the model in the right way. I find that it makes the whole process a lot faster. Bum, 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 bum. Can't wait, I should get myself a second unit of these so I can have two of these big units running around. More because they look great. You know, I have my I have my metal ones, but the thing about metal models is they chip like nobody's business. So you paint them really nicely and then if you're a tournament gamer like myself, you know, you want stuff that you can that is utilitarian, that looks cool, but you can also sort of like malhandle. And a lot of the times metal miniatures are not the models that you can malhandle. Because they just end up getting chipped and malhandled. Jack Wharton dot 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 zero 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 dot zero. What what? Lots of stuff. Have them running around with the Vizark. Yes, that's just correct. More security. Hello, welcome, welcome to the chat, buddy. Nice to see you. Right now we're just doing a second coat on the purple on dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, dude. Cat ran on the keyboard. <laughs> yeah, that's the excuse I make when I decide to type silly things on the computer. Yeah, sure. The the cat typed random stuff on the computer. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's okay. We won't judge you too much. Dun, 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 dun. I hope everybody's doing well. This is a uh, is a super exciting part, which is oh, there's the spider again. Hey, Mr. Spider, why are you going up that way again? Hmm. Thought I told you to stay. <sighs> Stop trying to like get up there. That's too close to my face. Stay down there. Dun 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 You should name the spider Lawrence. Stay down there, Lawrence. Stay down there. Who's the Archon now? This guy. Itsy bitsy Talos flew up from the drain. Down came the homunculus. Stabbed him in the brain. He he he. We can all laugh and have fun, folks. Okay, perfect. Ah, so sexy. Okay, let's see if I can salvage some of this color here. Basically put it over where the color was being silly on this one, where it was too watery.
Lawrence has decided to take a bit of a break and is just sitting there relaxing. So what's Scarry's name? The Blade. That's right. Why? Because he usually runs around with a Venom Blade or a Husker Blade. But he is the Blade. Well known for his martial prowess. Lawrence here on the other hand, adept at catching flies. <laughs> uh, the trollage is real. Love you, Lawrence, buddy. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Okay, time to do the last little bit on the purple here on these blades as well mm, excuse me that was a totally a good burp okay so uh, I'm just doing the second coat it's um you know it's a little bit more watered down than the first coat, but essentially I'm just to set fault trying to follow the same lines that I put in the original coat. The aim there is just to fill out the color so you don't really see the um the black of the under the undercoat right because it's not supposed to be black it's supposed to be purple. Now, the key here is don't put it on too thick because you don't want it to be looking thick. And you still have to do highlights and stuff like that, which will, and the wash, which will still sort of like blend the color in. You definitely want the richness of the color to come through, which is easy with this palette. Like this color palette is fan freaking tastic, I will say that. Bam, 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 bam. And if you do get a little bit extra here or there, it doesn't matter that much because it is supposed to be like the power glow of a power sword, so you can kind of get away with a little bit of splash over color on the hilts of the swords or the power thing generators or whatever. So, in your opinion, says Aaron Bosman. Hello, Aaron. How are you? Hopefully you are doing well. I'm doing fantastic, thank you. In your opinion, Scary, what do you think GW should do to improve the custodies? Well, give them a bucket and a mop. Or did you mean custodies, not custodians? Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's kind of what they do for the Emperor. They just fix messes. Or is that the Grey Knights? Aren't they the custodian guard? Um, so I feel that having a, the ability to sort of, you know, custodians themselves as like a as a straight up army have always felt a little weird to me in 40k. Mainly because they're, you know, supposed to be like, you know, these like crazy, super powerful more powerful than space marine, space marine mega soldiers, you know, made with like emperor gene seed or whatever, which is some crazy stuff, right? Anyway, so hey, longbow, how are you? Who knows these days? That is true. Uh, we don't know anything about a whole bunch of stuff, really. Ooh. No, but um, I feel like they need um, 
like a better way to sort of navigate. I, I don't know. Like they're, I think they're still good. I think anti tank is like their biggest downfall. You know, they have a lot of bolters and they can clear a bunch of like infantry. But other than like strength six charges, you know, they don't really have other than the Alaris Terminators or whatever. They have like those Melta, those Melta cannon arm flame thingies or whatever. You know, you can. They're just super elite. And in a in a game where you have to take objectives and stuff like that, like super elite doesn't always work. You know, the Space Marine Army could just outshoot the custodies and outbody the custodies. So why not just take Space Marines? I think that's an issue with just elite armies in general. They just tend to get outclassed and outshunned by, you know. Just regular run of the mill armies, to be honest. You know what I mean? Uh, hey, Longbow, says Scardcast. Long time no see. Long time no see, buddy. Thanks for tuning in. How are your painting skills progressing nowadays? Well, it's improving since I've been hashtag just putting paint on it. The more you put paint on it, the better you get a painting. You know, I've been, the stream has been going strong now for, I want to say, a year and. I've been literally streaming painting every day for a year and, you know, three months or four months now. And it gets more and more fun every day. And I get, I've been exposed to different painting styles and, you know, I've painted everything from titans to characters to, you know, things that, yeah, you know, I use in Blackstone Fortress or, you know, things that I'm never going to use in a game whatsoever just for fun of it and that alone has increased my painting foo skills quite a lot i feel like i'm just a lot more comfortable with that brush in hand than i used to be and that like painting has become just like a habitual thing for me now which to be honest is really cool don't they have those grav tanks? Yes, they do. They have grav tanks. Yeah, like the tanks are great and all, you know, like custodies are not bad. They're they're good. They're just, you know, those grav tanks just die to space marine tanks, right? So it's like, why not just take space marine tanks? So I feel like if a good competitive player grabbed space uh, custodies and just ran with them, that they'd make them work nicely and they'd be used effectively on the tabletop. But you need somebody who's dedicated to playing with that faction. And there are a lot of Custodes players that could probably tell you exactly what the Custodes need to be effective. You know, I'm sure they have tons of ideas. Being like, hey, you know what we need? We need uh, this and we need that. And you're like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. There we go. I like it. Funny that in Master of Mankind it says A three T three R N U five. Uh, if Master of Mankind book, I think they reach some conclusion. Army size action space marines would outperform custodies. Well, yeah, because custodies are like bodyguards, right? But if a bodyguard goes against a platoon, like you know, unless he's Rambo bodyguard, but he's you know like just a monster. But yes, it makes sense in that sense. Okay. Cool. So this was the initial uh, paint. We're going to let these guys dry, and then we're going to start doing some of the work on the model in turn. But this was a quick little tutorial on how to get um, the basics done for this model. I think we're going to be calling it a day at that. So I hope you guys enjoy seeing that. I'm going to be putting some pictures up, and we'll continue this on the stream tomorrow for our next isolation station. So I believe... Matt Alfarish should be doing his celebration live stream because he recently became a Twitch affiliate, which is awesome. It only took him a week, which is great, which is a lot less than it took me. But we've uh, we've been helping him out. We've been rating his channel. We've been following him. We've been giving him views. So I think we should go over and check Alfarius 242 out. So let's go and raid his channel, shall we? Because I think that would be awesomely fun. 
Hail Imp89, how's it going? Everybody, let's hop on, let's go say hi to Altharius. And let's do that. If you're watching us on YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. I've been Skari, your grateful host, and this is us signing off until tomorrow for Isolation Station 23. Thanks a lot, folks. You've been amazing. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Let's go cheerio and have some fun with that. Ba-boom. Taking it back. And that's that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Bye, everybody.